show cover one crew what is going on hope everybody is doing awesome out there nfl draft weekend baby we uh, round one concluded last night it was a dandy we saw teams of uh, climbing falling up and down this board navigating their way to get the players that they covet the most a lot of action a lot of action no kidding man and i mean okay i don't know how i feel about my buffalo bills pick but i had some time to fester so i got some good comments on that as well but there was a clear winner in this uh, first round for me especially based on value and what the picks were i'll let you know who that is but we'll dive in what who who went where what actually happened in this first round bryce young number one overall pick to the carolina panthers uh, you know the cat was let out of the bag early uh, on thursday after afternoon so we all kind of assumed that it was going to be a Bryce Young and I think you know nobody's really sh overly shocked at that one at this point but you saw what happened you know all the chatter going on about CJ Stroud they're trying to talk him down I'm more than convinced at this point NFL teams pay the media to bash these players to get their draft stock to fall so that they have a better opportunity to snag them dirty business no kidding, it is dirty business, but the Houston Texans, man, they came out as big dogs. They go get C.J. Stroud at pick number two, and they follow that up by trading up back up to number three, and they go get Will Anderson, one of the top edge rushers, top players in this entire NFL draft. Unbelievable, and with D'Amico Ryans, the way that he's setting up this team already, that defense is already looking nice on paper, and I mean, the way that he operates with his schemes and systems, D'Amico Ryans is going to make this team extremely dominant in the next couple years. They look good right now with a C.J. Stroud. You got John Mechie coming back. You got Nico Collins, D uh, Damian uh, Pierce. You got some pieces that you can play with already, and we're only in round one. Will Anderson is just going to aid in this uh, defense, rushing the passer where the defense already has a very good defensive secondary unit. So I do like what the Houston Texans did on this draft board. No kidding. Quick rebound after all the Deshaun Watson issues, man. This is a very good uh, step in the right direction for those Houston Texans. Texans, y'all should be extremely happy. Texans fans. Number four, Anthony Richardson. Some a little bit shocked. I was a little bit not necessarily overly shocked because you know they were going quarterback. But the issue was who were they going to go after? Was it Anthony Richardson or was it Will Levis? Again, the media talking up a Will Levis, and he's still sitting in the green room. He'll likely get picked on day two. But, I mean, Anthony Richardson in this offense with a uh, Jonathan Taylor. Goodness gracious. They're going to run up everybody's cool -o man this season if Anthony Richardson gets to start right away from day one. They're just going to run up everybody's, you know what, because they're just going to be dominant force. It's going to be a lot of running upside for these Indianapolis Colts. Fantasy football-wise, get ready, man. JT is going to have a monster year with an Anthony Richardson. No kidding. Number five, Devin with a spoon. He, I, This wasn't a shock to me either. One of the best corners in this draft, I want to say. Maybe a little high for me. I didn't expect him to go in the top five, but Seattle is, uh, you know, adamant about rebuilding this Legion of Boom Num 2.0. And, I mean, now you got Kobe, you got uh, Tyreek, uh, Tyreek, and uh, now you got Devin Witherspoon, and you get Jamal Adams back. This is a very formidable unit that is going to be very difficult to uh, play with and contend with in the secondary for the Seattle Seahawks. Very good pick for them as well. Arizona Cardinals moved up and down this draft board quite a bit, and they find themselves at pick number six, and they go Paris Johnson Jr. They got to they gotta protect Kyler Murray. Simple as that. I mean, they got a lot of needs. This roster is not put together very well whatsoever at this point. Lots of holes. You got a lot of players that do want to leave. Buda Baker, DeAndre Hopkins, etc. So, I mean, starting with that offensive line, rebuilding that unit is actually uh, very important. And once they get Kyler back, get him some protection. No kidding, man. The L uh, Las Vegas Raiders, they go number seven and Tyree Wilson very good pick him and Max Crosby goodness I mean some of the you know positional groups just keep getting richer and the Vegas Raiders are going to be very good here you got to chase down Patrick Mahomes Russell Wilson and Justin Herbert so you know you need the weapons and the firepower and uh, Tyree Wilson is just going to be unbelievable with a Max Crosby going to be gorgeous to watch them on a weekly basis B. John Robinson he goes to the Atlanta Falcons can I be an Atlanta Falcon fan again yes I can I was a huge Julio Jones backer and supporter always loved watching the Falcons B. John is my guy so I'm back on the wagon 
as uh, with a uh, smaller, uh, you know, fan base for me uh, going to the Atlanta Falcons. I'm a Bills fan through and through, but watching the Falcons play ball is always fun. And you got a guy like B. John Robinson, who fantasy football wise, this was the best place that you could have seen B. John go. He is just going to carry the rock, helping out a Desmond Ritter grow his game. So, I mean, B. John right now to Atlanta is very nice. Number nine, the Eagles, they traded up and they snagged themselves Jalen Carter. If you can believe it, the rich continue to get richer, like I'm saying. Jalen Carter, the fall was a little bit, you know, uh, peculiar I guess I'm lost for words I mean it, it was it was interesting to see his fall but I mean we did understand that some character issues off the field that teams did get weary of that so I mean the Eagles and Howie Roseman are just doing damage on these drafts man just getting Jalen Carter at number nine one of the best if not the best player in this entire draft class at number nine is theft in its own right and they jumped the Bears to get that the Bears were happy and satisfied to do that trade because they got Darnell Wright and some draft picks they got to protect a uh, Justin Fields Fields. We knew this was the MO for the Bears. They had to do this right. And uh, Darnell Wright's an absolute savage, man. What? Almost 600 uh, snaps, I believe, last year and didn't give up a sack. Goodness, he is a good one. I liked him a lot. We had him pegged for the Buffalo Bills. That dream went out the window uh, right in the top 10. So, I mean, nevertheless, it is what it is. Peter Skaronsky, I had him mocked here to the Titans. He goes to the Titans. They had to revamp this offensive line. So, we'll see. I mean, the Titans are on one of those, uh, you know, teetering uh trends where they're almost on a rebuild and they're kind of you know what are we going to do we're going to give it one last kick in the can before we blow it up kind of feels like it that uh, when we're seeing Derrick Henry being rumored to be traded at some point obviously looking uh, not like it's going to happen this season but Peter Skaronsky is a very good uh, tackle he could be an elite guard no kidding for a long long time number 12 the Detroit Lions they shocked everybody as they moved up and down this board as well and they go Jameer Gibbs if you can believe it Two running backs in the top 12. I mean, what is this, 1997? I mean, I, I, it was a crazy shocker. I had Gibbs going to the Eagles at pick 30 in my mock draft. Obviously off on that one. I, I had a feeling that Gibbs was going to be selected here in the first round, but the Detroit Lions, they do shock everybody. Clearly, they are out of the business of DeAndre Swift. They've seen enough. He just cannot stay healthy. They uh, signed uh, uh, David Montgomery to the fold. So you're looking like you're going to have a Jameer Gibbs and a David Montgomery in this backfield for many years to come, hopefully. And Gibbs is one of these talented playmakers. I do a lot of criticism going to the Detroit Lions right now, but I do like how they're building. If Jamison Williams did not get popped on that suspension for this uh, uh, betting that he did uh, do uh, against the league rules, you would have a very good offense here. You'd have Gibbs, you'd have Montgomery, you'd have JMO, you'd have Amon Ross St. Brown. You got lots of weapons that you could dissect this field with. And Gibbs gives them another uh, uh, viable running back that does have a uh, passing upside. He is able to run the ball very well. Very interesting pick. Maybe a little high, maybe a little bit of a reach because they probably could have got him uh, probably a pick 18 as well. But, I mean, they, they go off their draft board, but it's a very interesting pick. I do not hate it. I think that they're going to be very explosive with a Gibbs. Lucas Van Ness goes to the Green Bay Packers at pick number 13. After the Aaron Rodgers saga is concluded, the Packers got uh, pick 13 swap picks with the Jets. Lucas Van Ness is just a Green Bay Packer pick uh, through and through. Love their edge rushers. They love how they can, uh, you know, utilize them in this defense. And Van Ness is a good fit for the Green Bay Packers. No kidding. Pittsburgh Steelers, they also trade up this board. They go after Broderick Jones. We knew it was either defensive back for me or offensive tackle. And they go and they get an offensive tackle. This is now Najee Harris return back to glory because they just could not block for this man all season long last year. You got a young quarterback that you got to protect you do have some wide receiver talent so this offense does not look terrible you could uh, potentially see them getting another offensive lineman in this draft as it goes to day two and day three but Broderick Drones is a uh, beast of a human being and Najee Harris sh should see a, a, at least capable holes to go through this year the Jets at pick 15 they go Will McDonald kind of a little shocking as well might have been a little bit high also they could have gone other places but it to me the way this defense is, and Robert Salah, he just wants a guy to pin his ear back and go after the quarterback. you got to pressure Josh, Josh Allen, and that's the number one uh, criteria for these New York Jets. The Jets' defense is already stout and solid. They have a good uh, defensive front, good front seven, and they're going to just add to it with a Will McDonald. Even if he does play sparringly, he's got enough uh, rushing upside that he can get after the quarterback, and he should stay relatively fresh on a rotational scheme with the New York Jets, man. The Washington Commanders at number 16, Emmanuel Forbes. 
I love this kid, okay? Yes, he is thin. He's like 166 pounds. He is, what, 6'1"? He's got natural ball hawking ability. Kid, man, he, he he got, what, 14 interceptions in his collegiate career, six return for touchdowns. This man just, the he's got a nose for this ball, and it's like glue to his hands. I love the pick for the uh, commanders a lot. I think he's going to add a lot of uh, good playmaking upside for this defense. He is a definite good talent. He's got to put on some more weight. No kidding. 166 is too light. You got to get him up to about the 180 range, and then I'll be satisfied. But he is a very talented player, and a lot of people will take notice. Number 17, the New New England Patriots traded down and they got Christian Gonzalez. This was the shocker to me is that Christian Gonzalez actually fell in this draft as far as he did. The, the rumor had it that he didn't interview very well, so that uh, kind of dropped him down boards. But he's got talent for days also. He is a younger dude, so he's going to figure stuff out. And playing with Bill Belichick with a secondary that does have good pieces also, they go to the route of saying we got to defend Josh Allen and Aaron Rodgers now. So they're going after some defensive back help. Christian Gonzalez is a good one. The Detroit Lions at pick 18, they shock the world again, and they go Jack Campbell at 18 so Gibbs and Campbell so Campbell is probably the best linebacker in this entire draft class he is a Dan Campbell type of guy no kidding they're going to utilize this man in every uh, situation that they possibly have and they possibly can and he's just going to add to the help of the run defense for the Detroit Lions Jack Campbell is a very talented player and he just fits the mold of what uh, coach head coach Dan Campbell likes to do number 19 the Tampa Bay Buccaneers they go Kalaja Kansi Okay, we we thought maybe quarterback, but I think they're they're pretty much settled with what they have right now. It's not going to be necessarily great, but now you're just you're beefing up the defensive front, man. Vita Vea's got a uh, running mate now, and Cansey is a very talented, athletic individual. Lots of comps saying a lesser Aaron Donald. Cansey should fit in pretty well with these Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Here's where the wide receiver run happened. Those darn uh, Seattle Seahawks. I thought the Buffalo Bills had an opportunity here to snag a little Jackson Smith and a Jigba. Did not happen because the Seattle Seahawks uh, killed that dream really quickly and then every, it forced everyone down the board to do the same. JSN goes to the Seattle Seahawks to team up with a DK Metcalf, Geno Smith, the Kenneth Walker the third, Tyler Lockett. Oh, my goodness. Seattle Seahawks are looking better and better every day, and they're going to challenge for this division. You know you needed more firepower to challenge those 49ers, and, I mean, now they got a lot more with a Jackson Smith and a Jigba. He's going to do some damage with a Geno Smith. If Geno continues to play the way he's playing, huge theft, I think, for Jackson Smith and a Jigba as he was supposed to be in the top 12 in this NFL draft. Number 21, the Los Angeles Chargers. They go Quentin Johnston. Okay, you can have him. For me, you know, he's a good, talented player. He's got lots of speed, and I think this is where they wanted this. He's a bigger wide receiver in this class, not necessarily what he's 6'2", uh, over 200 pounds. So he is a uh, stout frame, st stout put together. But he's, uh, he's got lots of speed, and I think that's what the Chargers are missing on this receiving core, a big, uh, bigger wide receiver with wheels. And uh, Quentin Johnson can play that slot. He can play the hooks and the turns. When he hooks uh, the hook routes, he turns and goes. He's off to the races. He can definitely make plays with his legs. He does have some hand problems that I didn't like if you caught the scouting report. But with uh, Justin Herbert, just adding another speedy weapon to this offense will do a lot of good favors as well. Number 22, more hurt for the Buffalo Bills fans. Zay Flowers, he gets picked up by the Baltimore Ravens. And I guess the Ravens weren't kidding, man. They signed Lamar Jackson to the massive contract extension. They had OBJ before that, and then they go and draft themselves a little Zay Flowers. This offense, so now it's it's what? Uh, Lamar Jackson, no more excuses. You got all the weapons that you've been asking for, and uh, Zay Flowers... I mean, playing alongside an OBJ, they're going to be absolutely dynamic on this field in the wide receiver room with uh, Rashad Bateman coming back from the Liz Frank. We'll see how it all shakes down. But now Lamar does have weapons, and this offense has no more excuses but to move forward. That one hurts. I really wanted Zay or an Addison to the Buffalo Bills. That did not happen because Addison got picked next to the Minnesota Vikings. And they needed a, a running mate for uh, Justin Jefferson. J.J. and Addison are going to be absolutely stellar with a Kirk Cousins, with a Dalvin Cook. This offense still is going to be able to move. And I think they want one last kick at the can to see if, what they could do in the NFC in the playoffs. Addison will uh, definitely provide uh, uh, the great elixir that is required. And you thought J.J. got open before. Man, you watch the separation that Jordan Addison has in his game. They're going to be struggling every single week defenses to cover these two gentlemen. No kidding about that. Number 24, the Giants do move up and they go Deontay Banks defensive back 
They needed help, and Banks is a very good talent. I had him go in at 24 to the Jaguars, so at least I hit the pick right. Did just didn't hit the team. But, I mean, Banks is a very talented defensive back, and the Giants do require a lot of defensive help as they continue to rebuild and revamp that defense to get that much better. They got a tough team and a tough task against those Dallas Cowboys and Philadelphia Eagles to play, so you need a lot of coverage. No kidding. The Buffalo Bills, they make a trade up when I was screaming at a trade down after Jordan Addison got uh, picked by these Minnesota Vikings. They trade up and they jump the Dallas Cowboys because they thought the fear was there that the Cowboys would be taken. Dalton Kincaid. I can't hate it, okay? And I, it hurt at the beginning because I really wanted the Bills to trade down, stack picks, go get a Josh Downs, and then potentially grab a linebacker or a defensive uh, uh, lineman at that point in that second uh, second round. Did not come to pass, but Dalton Kincaid is one of these guys. He's uh, probably my highest ranked. I think I did have him as my highest ranked tight end in this class. He's got a lot of ability, natural ability, speed. He is like a big wide receiver out there. He is... He's not Travis. I'm not going to say we're not going to compare the best uh, tight ends in the NFL like with Travis Kelsey, but this is kind of similar to what you're hoping he's going to eventually turn out to be something like what Travis Kelsey does for the Kansas City Chiefs. You give Josh Allen another big body weapon who has the ability, athletic upside and hands for days. His drop rate is ridiculously low, and I mean, you want a very reliable chain mover, red zone opportunity, play action pass could potentially be there. The Buffalo Bills could be going into double tight end sets a lot now with Dawson Knox as well, so this offensive scheme could change just a little bit, but uh, as I got uh, you know a little bit more uh, you know thought process to it, I'm starting to get a little bit more warm to Dalton Kincaid. Hated the fact that we had to trade up for it, but I completely understand what Brandon Bean and the Bills wanted to do there. Dallas at 26, they go Mazzy Smith. They needed defensive tackle help. I had a different defensive tackle uh, going to them in my mock draft, but, I mean, same type of uh, issue they require. They need some more help on the defensive front. Mazzy Smith is a very good, talented player, and we know Mika Parsons was singing his good graces. He's happy to see this man on the team. The Jacksonville Jaguars navigated this board a couple times, and they got an offensive tackle. Anton Harrison. He's a good talent as well. You need more offensive help. They lost uh, one of their tackles to the Chiefs this offseason. So you got to revamp. you got to rebuild. Yes, he's not probably the elite, uh, top elite uh, talents at the tackle position in this draft, but he is very good, very sound. He should be able to uh, do wonders for this offensive line, protecting uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence and helping Travis Etienne run the ball. The Cincinnati Bengals, they require more help on the defensive side as well, and they get my guy, Miles Murphy. I'm a huge fan of this man. He is just an absolute unit Put together individual, 6'5", like 275. He is just a unit, no kidding. And he's he's a little bit raw in some tendencies, but this man's pursuit and uh, ability to contain and play run defense, he's going to be an instant uh, bread maker for the Cincinnati Bengals, no kidding. Number 29, the New Orleans Saints, they go Brian Breesey. And, I mean, again, defensive tackle help. I had another defensive tackle going here, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, they require more defensive line help as they've been picked clean over the past several years on on, free, on the free agent market. So Breesey is a very talented, very big, uh, you know, fast, athletic, big man up the middle. He's going to do very well in New Orleans. Number 30, how dare you do this, NFL teams? You should be ashamed of yourself. You let Nolan Smith fall to the Philadelphia Eagles, man. And the uh, breaking news, the Eagles have changed their name. They are now the Philadelphia Bulldogs. Because, I mean, every UGA player is basically on this team. You snag yourself a Jalen Carter and a Nolan Smith, one at 9 and then one at 30. What is the NFL thinking, man? I just don't understand. They got talent for days. Howie Roseman continues to luck out on this draft board. He is building this unit, this team, to be successful for many years to come because these cupboards are absolutely loaded, and the Eagles could literally have one of the best rosters in the NFL. No kidding about that. The Kansas City Chiefs, they finish it off, and they go uh, Azuma. I, mean, I don't want to butcher his first part of the hyphen part of the name. But again, they lost Frank Clark. They needed somebody. I think I saw one buddy, uh, somebody comp him as a Judon. It's a great comp. He's a good, talented player. There are talented edge rushers here with lots of upside. And you know the Chiefs are just going to continue to stack the defensive front so that they can continue to play defense the way that they do. 
Chiefs just keep hitting uh, late in the draft as well, and they just turn out all the time. So when we're talking winners in this draft, you got to say number one for me is these Philadelphia Eagles. Based on value to market share, I mean, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith is just a home run in this first round. They got still lots of picks to come in day two and day three. Eagles did extremely well in this draft, as did those Seattle Seahawks with a Witherspoon, Jackson Smith, and a Jigba. They look good. They're building out that Legion of Boom 2.0, man because that secondary is going to be a force to be reckoned with, as did those Houston Texans. Yes, excuse me, <clears throat> they had to navigate up the board just a little bit. But, I mean, C.J. Stroud, Will Anderson, very, very good. I mean, uh, double picks in a first round is definitely going to give you high grades, and they got some supreme talent. Good upside for an Anthony Richardson and the Colts. People could say, you know, the fail of the first round probably was the Detroit Lions, just based on how value is for running backs and the fact that Jack Campbell could have slipped into that second round. So that's why a lot of people are going to say the value just wasn't there for the return when you had two picks in the first round and you could have went multiple ways to help, like, say, uh, Aiden Hutchinson. You could have helped uh, the defensive secondary a little bit more with a Christian Gonzalez. So you could potentially say that the Detroit Lions did lose the first round where the Eagles, Texans, and Seahawks did win based on the picks that they did have. But I do love myself a little B. John to those Falcons as well. And we got a lot of good stuff coming on day two and day three, man. I am so pumped. It's the NFL draft. Lots of good stuff. Uh, round one recap. Winners, losers. Who's doing well? Who's not? And I think I, I broke it down for y'all pretty well. But get ready for uh, round two, round three on Friday and then Saturday to conclude the NFL draft. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Jump in those comments. Give me your thoughts. Your team win. You happy with your team's draft picks? Throw them in the comments. We can definitely talk it out. But we'll see you next time. I am out. Mm -hmm.